practice for safe chemical storage. It's been a, a very well attended webinar, so it must be a very popular subject. With me today in doing the bulk of the presentation is Tom Hassey, my coworker. My name is Paul Benbow. I'm uh, gonna be your host today. And with us answering questions kind of in the background is Augusta Brindley and Amy Pina, members of our tech team. So when you look at the bottom of your screen, there's an opportunity to answer questions and you enter questions and sometimes we respond live. Um, but in any event, we will send out a summary email and it'll have a recording of this presentation, the slide deck you're about to see and all the questions and answered answered in detail. So if you, you have a question, go ahead and post it. You know, we do our best to get them all answered in real time, but if we don't, fear not, we answer every question and everybody will get the benefit of that, the questions and the responses. Just a quick blurb on ChemWatch. Uh, we were established in 1989, been in business 31 years. <clears throat> we are headquartered in Australia. We have uh, 21 offices globally. We have a center of excellence in Nashville, Tennessee, and four offices in the US. Um, of our 5,000 global customers, six of the Fortune five, six of the top 20 Fortune 500 companies uh, are ChemWatch clients. And our customers um, are much as you might expect, oil and gas, automotive, mining, aerospace, anybody that uses chemicals <clears throat> would be a good potential candidate or an, and a good user of our product. So today's webinar, you know, the topics we're going to discuss is just hazardous substances and dangerous goods. You know, the descriptions and the differences. You know, what is a chemical register slash inventory? How do I create one? How do I use it? The ChemWatch register tool, how we would do this and help you and make your uh, organization better with your use of chemicals. And the ChemWatch chemical management platform and our data sources. And that being said, I'm going to turn the presentation over to Tom. Thank you, Paul. <clears throat> Good morning and afternoon to all. Thanks again for attending. Let me know if, uh, if you have an issue with sound or screen, certainly let us know. But I just want to take you through a little bit of a background. <clears throat> so the webinar is about safe chemical storage. And it's important to understand, quite frankly, how do we define safe? That is, how do we define hazard? versus dangerous. So a hazardous substance is any substance that has a potential to harm human health. They can be in, in, in all forms there of matter, solid, liquid, gas, pure substance or mixtures. Uh, these substances typically produce vapors, fumes, dust, and mists, and are classified based on health effects only, both immediate or long-term. Dangerous goods, substances that are corrosive, flammable, combustible, explosive, oxidizers, water reactive, or other hazardous properties that can cause explosions or fire, serious injury, death, or large-scale damage. A few examples, flammable liquids, corrosives, gases, asbestos, explosives, and the storage icons are familiar to all, most of our audience in terms of uh, identifying both hazardous substances and dangerous goods. So again, it's about safe storage. So let's understand what we mean by a register slash inventory. So a register is a list of all chemicals stored or handled or used at a workplace. These uh, per OSHA need to be regularly, readily accessible to all workers involved in, in its usage or storage or handling. Readily accessible means documents or documentation can be accessed without difficulty. It can be in a, a folder, or, you know, three ring binder, electronic, or other forms. The SDS must be made available to emergency server workers or, or, excuse me, and anyone else who's likely to be exposed to the hazardous chemical. And it has to be up to date. Also a term we're gonna be using today, both in the demonstration and in discussions is the word manifest. So what's the difference? Well, manifest is a list of all the hazardous substances in a, in a workplace that have exceeded their amounts. So it's a subset of the register. We'll talk about this more later in the, in, excuse me, in the webinar. So let's um, break away and go into the product itself where I can show you how do we build a register? Well, before we do that though, let's talk about our system. This, this, uh, the screen is, is a, a very, multiple purpose user screen where on the far left will be icons of all the products that are included in a user's license, 
authoring, label making, doing risk assessments, starting approvals. And then we, of course, have live help, which is uh, nice where they can take over your screen and uh, save, save the day, so to speak. You can change our UI in the 47 languages. We also have help in terms of e-learning is a click away. <clears throat> and there's a manual in here, um, a, um, a help, which is nice. It's actually a search box that allow you to go through and find uh, find your topic of interest. You can look at our, our uh, your chemicals in both a material or ingredient view. We have a number of built-in filters in the system that allow you to <clears throat> filter out specific entities or properties of interest of your chemicals. We'll talk a lot about this here with the reporting. And then I have a search box. I have an ability to look at the data in different forms and of course a folder tree, which I'll show in a minute. But more importantly, we have over 108 user permissions that can be assigned. This is the super user view, we'll call it the administrator view per my login. And this is what comes with the license, access to everything. And then this person can then create clones of themselves as many super users as you like, but also you can create as many user profiles as you like using the 108 different permissions. So <clears throat> I have a background with facilities engineering and this would be a great interface for contractors coming into a plant. Why is that? You notice there's no products to click on and confuse oneself. There's no folders to select from. All they can do is search your collection of SDS and print, send or save the document. So you can get very granular in terms of how you want the user screens to look. I'm going back to the super view because <clears throat> I want to show you, so to speak, again, how would you start a register? Well, it's actually starting by creating a folder, a folder of materials. And this is done down here where I have already created a number of folders, but to create new ones is very easy. You right click on it, say create, you give it a name. We have 43 different types of folders you can create. Some of these have built-in properties around IFC and around barcode-based inventory management. So again, you give it a name, you, the type, language, country, and you're done. So again, I've created a number of these already, which have chemicals stored in them. These are parent-child relationships. So under US, I have a number of states. And under Michigan, I have a number of subfolders. And again, you have no limit at how deep you want to go here. And if you get really, really deep, you can always use our search box in the folder tree to basically find where you're at. We have a client comes to mind that has over 700 locations that are uniquely identified at the folder level because you want the folders to represent how you're physically storing your chemicals, right? Because that's how you're going to do your reporting. <clears throat> so in this case, by typing Michigan, I can go right to the Michigan folder and I've already pulled in SDS. And typically we will do this, actually not typically, all the time. When we have a new customer, we will load this folder tree with the appropriate number of SDSs according to what our client wants us to do. So in the preload stage, these are put together for you. But you can always add to it by going into our search box. And again, you can search in our full collection of over 60 million SDS or your own collection. So for instance, if I were to type in benzene, it'll tell me every chemical I have in the full collection that contains the word benzene. And when I pick on it, it's going to show me everything in our collection from 100% purity down to 0.1 containing benzene. As an example, underneath this icon be, could be hundreds of vendor documents. I can also filter by uh, U.S. or sorry, uh, sorry, country and language. So again, I can find any of these documents very easily by doing this. Now, if I'm not sure if it's in my collection or not, you can always use our tracking button. And you can see I've already, this, this document's already been loaded in a number of our locations, including the one we were just looking at. So these are um, your classic PDFs that you see in terms of the vendor document with all the pertinent information. For instance, if I go to section eight, it better tell me what type of gloves to use this type of stuff. You see chemical resistance. Um, you'll see in a minute, we have some review SDS that we create uh, based on a, uh, a previous customer that is a neutral view of the chemical, but we'll do a deep dive 
for instance, on a number of parameters, including PPE, where we'll tell you what glove type to use or not to use. So at any time, I can grab these and just pull them in a folder. I'll just pick this one as an example, drag it into Arizona, and it says success. So if I were to go, so as you drag chemicals in or you have us preload these chemicals, you'll end up with a folder view of the substance where the SDS is, is a line item. So in this case, I have 25 of them. These are unique materials. And actually what they are is these, we call them catalog names, but they're actually the product name. So you can see I actually have for each vendor, I have a specific document next to their name. Now, if I wanted to go into material view, which just shows me quite frankly, all the materials I have in, just have to click on this, go in material name. So those 25 unique vendor SDS I have in that folder, I actually have 18 materials. So you have a number of ways to look into the data at the folder level. And the reason I'm explaining this is this is your register. Okay, we've just created a register. Now I'm starting to show you some of the things you can do with the register. For instance, I can go in here and add inventory against that SDS. I can pick my units, current volume, max volume, license volume. <coughs> Excuse me. I have some other parameters in here in terms of the risk statements, the cast number, but you can see I have a couple icons next to the documents. I have a VGD and a gold. These are two independent data sets that ChemWatch creates using our customers' data. So when we bring in, let's say, benzene as a chemical from Flint Hill Resources for a client, we extract over 70 data points from that, that material. And these allow you to now go in and be able to report on of, of physical, physical entities, um, the H codes, the P, the P phrases, excuse me. So you have a number of parameters you can now create, but again, the SDS is always available, but because we extract so much data from it, you can do a couple of unique things. Like for instance, if I right click on this, I can go in report type and of that, I think it was eight pages, I can create a one page boil down of the vendor data with all the important information on it to the worker, H codes, the PPE. So you can see in this case, the vendor did not provide a lot of information. For instance, like the PPE is very, very general. <clears throat> so we can do the same with ChemWatch data. So in that collection, I have all these vendor documents for, for benzene, but I have next to it this gold icon. About 10 years ago, a customer came to us and asked us to create a set of review SDS, about 50,000, that will allow them to understand from a neutral point of view, um, the, the variance between vendors on classification and, and descriptions around the, the same toxin. So to get around that variability, they asked us to create a gold SDS. This is a separate data set, <coughs> sits in the, um, the folder. Excuse me a minute, I'm just trying to minimize the view here. It sits in the folder next to each other, but they don't intermix. I have in my system, I default to um, vendor documents anytime I pull up an SDS. And I also default to US English, but this is our gold SDS. This is a very special document. This is something that is updated constantly. You can see the last time I got an uh, update was October of 2019 in terms of any data relative to this document, but it's constantly being updated by our updating system, which Paul will talk about in a minute. But I can go in here and I can look at any section and we fill them all in. We give you all the regulatory data on the substance per the country language. But if you go into exposure, we do a deep dive from an industrial hy hygienic point of view on the gloves as an example and, and on respirator. So you saw in the vendor document, they said chemical impervious gloves. What we're telling you is the A means you can, this is the best product. C means do not use unless for short, term immersion, respirator by particulate size. So we do a deep dive on the, the, um, the substance itself. You can also convert this into 47, sorry, 93 different countries, 47 languages. I go outside GHS, I automatically get reach data populating the document. So these are very flexible. Again, they don't mix with the vendor. 
You can uh, look at either one. It's entirely up to you. You can also do the same when it comes to reporting. Oh, also before I move on, sorry, uh, let me go back to the gold real quick because we can create a number of one page documents from the gold that will really help in terms of communicating hazards to your workers. For instance, I can create a mini, just like I did with a vendor document, except in this case, you can see a lot more data. Look at the PPE we're providing where the vendor didn't have any. We actually put in ChemWatch specials, <laughs> we like to call them, icons that tell the worker and facilities management specifically what is needed. In this case, both the worker and the facilities engineer need to read this and then understand a spark proof fan must be provided and ignition sources need to be <laughs> away. <laughs> um, the H codes are boiled down into a uh, very simple reading um, um, structure so it can be read in an emergency by a non-chemist and first aid is very clear what to do. You can also create any of these documents as a one pager. I can do a one page PPE. Everything you just saw except actually in this case two pages it looks like. So we boil these down into just singular documents we'll call it and you can convert any of these to 47 languages. You can also do the same in terms of languages with the mini. Um, I can get again very specific and go into first aid. Red means read me first. So we provide a lot of information on the gold around worker safety, as you can see. So many of our clients, what they do is they report on the vendor data, right? You have to do that by law, but they use our golds to help understand the hazards involved in that substance. Basically, it's more comprehensive compared to what the vendors offer you. So again, I have a collection of chemicals. We're calling this a register. And um, at this level, what I can now do is, um, oh, these tags, we'll talk about these in a minute, but you can flag chemicals in your collection based on properties of interest. In this case, I'm identifying what's a, what's a flammable solid, what's on the global automotive declarable substance list, the Prop 65 reproduction regulation. So it's saying that benzene is affected by that regulation. So you can filter a report on your collection by specific parameters. We'll talk about that in a minute. But our report tool, for instance, with your register, you can now then create a report of your materials. I'm gonna go through this quick. And what this is, is a spreadsheet's created where the 25 rows of the spreadsheet are those 25 chemicals we've been looking at. And now you can go in here and add all sorts of specific information that you want to um, understand about that chemical. And you can move these around. And again, these would be columns in a spreadsheet. You can report on all the regulatory information around that. And again, the gold and the VGD, those are vendor specific, vendor specific data. ChemWatch Gold data. So again, you can create on these or report on these as separate entities. So again, once I do data points and pick, I can create a very simple report very quickly. Oop, I need to give it a name. Okay. So once I have this, I can go into the format, do a simple template. And I can define colors and columns, um, spread, that type of thing. So it's really easy to report on these materials. So basically, I just created a report on my chemical register. And again, I just pick random points. But again, you can pick very specific points, like obviously material name would have been one, uh, <clears throat> other entities. So you can see it's very simple to build a register. Either we do it for you if you become a new customer and then you add to it over time, like I was showing you, or you create your own, as I showed you by creating a filter, sorry, create a folder, my bad, and then dragging chemicals into that folder. So you can see very easy to use, and very easy to produce reports against it. Let me get out of here. Okay, so again, this is a register, what we're looking at here. <clears throat> and from here, you can create a manifest and that is identifying the hazard materials that have exceeded specific thresholds. We'll go to that in a minute, but I did want to talk about some of the reporting around now that you have this register, some of the reporting you can do. So let me flip back to the slides real quick. 
So once I have that register, as you just saw, I can report on what's incompatible in there, what needs to be segregated, what the placards around the hazardous materials, the manifest quantity reporting. And you can also notify via email uh, stakeholders who would be emailed when the folder, materials in that folder, exceed a manifest quantity level that you've set. The SARA reporting comes from that register, DHS reporting, international fire code reporting comes out of it. Also customized reports. I gave you a little taste of it with those tags, but for instance, um, I've created one called flammable aerosols. So I can filter any material in my collection that's affected by, that is a flammable aerosol and then report against that. For instance, I could then report like molecular weight or vapor pressure, those type of parameters. So you can get very granular, let's say, in terms of customization around your reports. So incompatible, and I'll show this in a minute. What's showing is it's gonna show you uh, that before you store things, what needs to be identified is the DG class, subsidiary risk, packing group, and that's what our software is doing for you. So it checks for compatibility segregation advice according to the DG classes. And it's really easy to use. So I go back to this view. All I got to do is go up in my filters and say, show me incompatibility. So it looks at all 25 items and says, okay, you have, this is okay. These chemicals are okay. They're compatible. And we, we give advice. The italics will give out advice. In this case, most materials, in most cases, these are compatible. However, not all materials with different UN numbers will always be compatible. So you need to look at the SDS just to be sure. So we're saying we're good here. Now we got to, now we have a problem. We have uh, WD-40 and solvents. They just don't like each other. Um, so we're saying segregation is required, minimum five meters. And so the icon now is going to give you specific instruction as to what to do. Segregate by five feet or more, but if one of the DGs is a liquid, you got to measure that distance from the edge of the spill catchment area. Okay, so it gets very st structured. No timber structures are, timber structures are not appropriate barriers. So it gets very granular. From a facilities engineering point of view, this is a fabulous document because incompatibility and segregation fall, sometimes falls on the, into the facilities maintenance group which are not always trained to understand, for instance, um, a, a, a concentrated alkali and an acid can both be DG9 and without instruction, facilities maintenance just might put those next to each other. So these icons, when you print center save this, it's a PDF where at the bottom of the, um, uh, let's say as a footnote, will be icons, for instance, in this case, if it sits still, S2, will be down at the footnote and it will describe what you need to do here and that this collection will be flagged as S2 in the PDF. Let's just do it, right? Rather than me talking about it. <clears throat> and same with the report generator. You can print, send, or save any of your documents at any time. So if we go to our incompatibility, incompatibility sorry, it says S2. And if we go to the bottom, we get to the bottom of this we'll see that S2 is there, okay? So easy to use, easy report, easy, easy. Everything's easy. Okay, so that was incompatibility. I also, let's get back out to the PowerPoint. Now let's talk about placards. You can generate these quickly from the register as well. So why do you need them? Well, you gotta do it if you've got hazardous materials or DGs exceeding specific quantities. And what needs to be on it, the words, the pictograms, it's got to be easy to understand in terms of being read by a non-chemist. And where do you locate them? Close proximity, outside the room, on the door, wherever it may be, where you're storing this stuff. So again, our system easily does this. It's the way we extract data, folks. We extract, I mentioned earlier, at the 70 plus data points, but we're linking ingredients into the regulatory uh, library that we also maintain. So you're getting all this filtering capability like just show me everything that's carcinogen show me everything that is an embryo toxin show me everything that's a corrosive so we have a lot of these filters already built in and including placardy so if i click on placardy what's going to show me is i have hazardous materials in these locations so if I go to ground level storage, the reason I don't have them in others, this is a demo account and I'm in, I'm in sales. So I only put 
materials in under Michigan in a couple folders there, just so I could show the product. So for instance, ground level storage, this could be a bin, or sorry, this could be a, um, um, you know, standalone location, it could be a, build, a room in a building. So you'd hang these placards outside of that room. And if you click on this little triangle, it's gonna tell you where this flammable, what is it, the flammable liquid and how much you got there, okay? Same with uh, flammable liquid class two, <clears throat> same thing. Now, if you go to the basement storage, so again, what you're seeing here, these are two rooms underneath Michigan, okay? They're separate rooms, but they sit under, we'll call it the facility or wherever it may be, and I'm just titling it in Michigan. Again, same applies. It'll tell you how much material you have at that folder in terms of this liquid class. Same with it up here. So when I go to Michigan, it's gonna show me those placards that we've just seen for basement and ground level storage, plus any other placards specific to Michigan. Okay, and again, you just go in here and it'll tell you where it came from, how much. Okay, so very, very easy placarding tool to use. Okay, let's um, go back to PowerPoint land for a second. Okay, so I already went through that. So manifest, inventory. Again, manifest is a written summary of hazardous chemicals that are used, hazard or, or stored on the workplace. So the manifest is only required when the hazardous chemicals exceed the threshold amounts. How often do you need to update it? You got, it must be updated anytime you do a change to the amount or types of chemicals in your register, okay? So you're actually updating the register, which then you create a manifest from, okay? Manifest versus register. Manifest only required, again, where hazardous chemicals present in the workplace exceed specified thresholds, while register is just a list of everything you got. So again, once you build the register, you can create this, we'll call it manifest quantity report. Really, really simple. Okay, so again, sorry about all the flip-flopping here, but it is what it is. Okay, so based on that, let's go into manifest quantity report. And the way that our system works is you click on the manifest folder. What that is, is it's a collection. It, it will show every chemical in your collection. I think there's like 3,300. So let me get out of here just so you, <clears throat> so you can see what I'm talking about. So I had 25 under the Michigan folder, but now I have 3,288. <laughs> so if I go into the manifest quantity report filter, it's going to, do some highlighting. What's going to show is any folder or location that has hazardous materials above the manifest quantities, it gets flagged red. If the inventory is below any of the limits, the facility or folder will be highlighted in white or yellow. It's actually your choice. So if we click on this, so here's the titles and it's going to show you where I got a problem. In fact, let's go down to US. It has more, more stuff in it, I believe. There we go. So in red, this is our problem, children. They've exceeded quantity. And this shows the different liquids. Throw those class. Um, okay. And then once I have this in this report form, this is really easy now to just create a PDF or a spreadsheet of this. So in this, here is your manifest quantity report. All you do is hit download. Actually, I think I was creating a PDF there. Oh, no, sorry, spreadsheet. So this would be your manifest quantity report. DG, material name, the shipping name, the UN number, all the information you need. Notification, yes. Which materials where you're having issues. Okay. And what you can also do is if you go into our settings, and you would do this ahead of time, but I wanted to show it in conjunction with the manifest tool. These are macros. When I hit settings, these are macros, which allow you to define, for instance, um, 
what does the user settings look like? Also, but they also have something called manifest settings. What you're able to do in here is, let me finish loading. If I go into notification management, I do an add. What you're able to do is subject. You might want to say uh, uh, too much stuff, right? Put in an email of the stakeholder who is responsible for the Michigan folder. Comments, you know, get into the plan immediately. Uh, Timestamp, and then what you all you got to do is just pick that folder that you want this person to be notified of. Okay, so really nice notification system built into our software. Okay, let's go back to PowerPoint land. So we talked about the manifest quantity report. And what I wanna highlight here is that around the world, you got storage regulations, right? That you need to report against if you're storing hazardous stuff. In the US, we have SARA tier two, the DHS in the IFC or International Fire Code reporting requirements. You see these are for the other countries and our software responds to all these. So um, you can go into that country format or have those documents in that country format and create very similar reports. So SARA 2, so it's title three. And again, I, I'm probably preaching to the choir out there, but just so everyone understands what is the tier two reporting cover. Title to, SARA title three, uh, requirements for local state emergency planning around hazardous chemicals. Public has rights to access this information. Any facilities using, storing, or releasing hazardous materials has to report. And there's the different provisions. And you can see in our software, we've already built into this a pre-built SARA report that will show you uh, the physical and health hand hazards or sections 11 and 311, 312 as columns within the SARA reports. We have a very comprehensive SARA report that captures all this information. And it's really easy to use. How many times are we going to say that, right? It is, because once you have that, once you have a register, it is easy to use. So let's um, let me go back to um, pick the good old US. Go to my hazards, look for Sarah. <clears throat> okay, what it shows in red is that is a facility where there's materials that are above the threshold planning quantity. So what you would do is by clicking on that, well, in this case, it's automatically click on it. It's going to tell you, for instance, the materials, which folder. So in other words, there are all sorts of folders underneath the U.S. It's telling you, for in this case, this problem is toluene is coming out of that Michigan folder, which I've, you know, it's underneath US, but it's ground level storage folder. So it gets very specific where this stuff's located, uh, the percentage, how much total weight, the subtotal ingredient. So very granular. And you can see it's automatically created. All you got to do is do a download. <clears throat> I've talked to a few customers that tell me this is pretty much, if not exactly, how the EPA wants to see it. Here's your 311 and 312 information. Okay, it's already pulled in. Nice, easy spreadsheet to share. Folder locations where the problems are. Okay, so. As you can see, very easy to create this. Once you build your register, get your amounts up to date, boom. These reports are, they just kind of roll out of the system. Without the boom, of course. Okay. Let's um, let's get out of here, back to PowerPoint. Okay, so we did the demo, report demo. DHS, what they want to know is list of chemicals of interest. Created in 2007, includes chemicals regulated by the EPA and chemicals included in the Chemical Weapons Convention, hazardous materials, explosives, and then they want to know what's the security issue. Okay. 
Well, that's just another filter in our system. taking a second, I picked a very large collection, which I didn't really want to. I was going to pick the Michigan folder, which is a subset of US, and it would load a little faster. So we'll just see how this goes. I may back out of it for demo's sake. I'm on a uh, hotspot, so it tends to be a little slow here. <clears throat> okay, let me see if I can put an end to this. There we go. So it's 492. So more, more materials you have is going to take longer to report on it. So for speed's sake, we'll pick on Michigan. And I'll run that DHS report here again. Okay. And it's nice is you don't have to go in and up and download. You just have to go click on a report button. And this is the format that DHS wants this information in. So before I go there, the uh, our system at this level, before you do a report, will tell you what the problem is. So in this case, it's theft, magnesium, theft, theft. Okay, so if we go into the report. You're in that editing. Chemical of interest, these three. I got, remember, I had a collection of 25, so I'm saying these three are the problems. Uh, concentration here, screening threshold, minimum concentration. I'm reading upside down here, bear with me. And then over here, total amount. And then, of course, the there's the security issue, and it's flagging theft for all three. And again, simple spreadsheet, send it in, and um, you know, you're done with the DHS at least at this time, right? Okay, so let's, oh, I went wrong way. Let me go into PowerPoint. International Fire Code. This, I think 30 states have adopted it now, replacing NFPA, so it's coming. So it establishes minimum regs for fire prevention and protection systems using prescripti prescriptive, excuse me, and performance related provisions. New buildings, facilities, existing buildings, processes. We've built in a report structure in our system, and it um, actually takes in consideration how you build out the folder. That is, when you create a new folder, you will be picking, as I'll show you quickly, you'll be picking not only the name and the type and language, but when you go down here, you're gonna say what floor is it on, how you're gonna put out the fire, and this, the selections are now gonna get be built in or will affect, I should say, your IFC reporting, okay? So to create the IFC report, and I think these are twice a year. So if you go down here under storage, I'm just gonna pick physical hazard, hazard indoor for speed's sake. So what's gonna show is red says, you've exceeded the maximum allowed quantity. And if you're under, which I don't have in here right now, if you're under it, it, it highlights in white. This is not accumulative. In other words, uh, Michigan isn't red because these two are red. That it's saying that in that Michigan folder are chemicals that have issues, that we want to call it that, that need to be reported against the IFC construct. So what does all that mean? Well, let's just click on it, go through it. So this would be the IFC report for ground level storage, and it's saying how much material name. Okay, so if we go to basement storage, I will have an IFC report just on what's in that basement. Even though it's IB and IC, the same class, you can see it's a different material. And if I go to Michigan, It's not reporting on what I have underneath, it's reporting specifically on what it has in its folder. Okay, so these are very simple to create. And all I have to do, let's say if I have this one, is go into uh, download, create a spreadsheet. 
you can do these in PDF as well if you like, but I have it set on spreadsheet just for speed's sake. And here's your IFC, not yet, yeah, here we go. Here's your IFC physical hazard report. Talks about the area, the sprinkler system if you have one on, the physical hazard, you know, the type of report, and it's showing where you got problems. Okay. So what it's saying is you're over the permitted amount. In this case, you're not even allowed. Okay, so easy to build these reports, as you can see. Let's um, get out of this. And I'm going back to PowerPoint. So I mentioned earlier when we were first starting about the search box and it had simple and it had this query builder next to it. Well, what the query builder allows you to do is create a really unique search. In this case, the slide saying, show me everything that comes out of Sigma Aldridge down here that contains butyl and condition. You can go and or. or. So Sigma and butyl with either R code 10 or R code 11. And how's all that happen? Is we're able to do this type of granular filtering because we link regulations to our SDS ingredients in real time by cast number, material name. And we have over 7,000 regulatory databases. Uh, Paul get into that in a little bit in a minute or from over 90 countries. And we use our own regulatory compliance people to monitor all this. So what this screen is show you, showing you is an example of that behavior. So in uh, my filters that I was showing you earlier, I have one called list of concern. And when you click on that, it's gonna show you all the chemicals that have regs that are forcing their sub the materials to be on that list of concern. So you can see underneath, I have uh, formaldehyde in the folder. And when I run that filter, list of concern, it's showing me these three materials pop up, or sorry, it shows formaldehyde. And when I hover over it, it shows me its ingredients. And those italics, if you click on that, like for instance, formic acid, if I click on that italic, well, that's what I did over here. You know, oh, I'm sorry, it'll show you every regulation that's forcing formic acid, hence formaldehyde, to be on a list of concern. Okay, so let's um, get out of PowerPoint. And what I'm able to do is create unique tags. I showed them over here. And I'll build one real quick because we're getting pretty close to the end of the hour here. So I've built a number of them already, but to build them is really easy. You just go in here, you give it a name, and you can pick regulations, UN number, whatever you may want to do. You can create any collection you want. And in fact, what I've done, and I'm going to jump to one real quick just to show you how I... Um, Put one to, put one together just for time's sake rather than building it. Whoops! If I go to um, uh, let's see which one, let's go to flammable aerosols because this is a fairly unique one. So when I go in there and I hit my edit button, it's going to show you my structure. Here's my name, but I have an ability to pick chemical family out of this. So I pick flammable liquid because there's a pull down. It's going to give you different types: flammable solid, flammable liquid, and I end it with the UN number. Another pull down. 1950, that's aerosol. So I've created a, a very unique filter of my collection called flammable aerosol. So you can see it's very simple to use. So when I go into a collection like I have here in Michigan, wait till it loads of 25 substances. Let me expand this a bit. You can see I have a number of tags in here that affect it. So if I click on flammable aerosol and apply, so the 25, I have three that are flammable aerosol. Now what you could do here is go into report, click all, go into data points, pick vapor pressure, You can see I don't have to type it out. It's a smart wheel. Molecular weight. And let's just say, geez, I don't want to see all this gold stuff. We'll just type in VGD. Show you every data point in there we've pulled from the vendor. Okay. 
So now I will have a spreadsheet called flammable aerosol that will have uh, three rows to it and two columns, vapor pressure, molecular weight. Obviously you can add more, it's up to you. And then these three would be the, the materials in the row that I'd be showing. Okay, so you can see very simple. Once you build a register, you can do many, many, many things to make your world a lot easier to use. Also, when you have a register, we have a new feature just introduced last year called heat mapping, where users can locate chemicals by severity and location using 3D rendered images of their building. It could be a, 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 could be a three, 360 uh, digital scan. It could be the actual CAD geometry of the buildings. We've done some Google views and pulled up data that way, but you can't get Z or height very good. And what it's going to show you is the chemicals in your folders. For instance, this could be the Michigan folder right here, where ground level storage is yellow, uh, uh, basement is red, and what it's saying is red has very severe materials in it compared to the yellow. So what this allows you to do is understand how you're locating your materials from a couple points of view. One, see these buildings right here? That's a church. Do you want to put dangerous stuff near a church or a school? Maybe not. Your storage room, this is taken with a 360 um, digital uh, scan. And what it's showing is, is you have materials in these different stores. Some are dangerous. And what you can understand from a emergency response point of view, could you get a fire hose through that hallway there and make a U-turn and put that out? And then it also will tell you what's in those folders. So oh, very dynamic system. Again, this all starts with the chemical register. You can do everything I've talked about for the last 30 minutes from that. So hints, read your SDS and labels, identify the hazards that the chemicals pose, work out your incompatibilities, do your register. Oops, I have something there. Ensure you have the right placard signage, put in any special storage measures, adhere to your codes or practices, ensure you're meeting local requirements and have all your reports and documents on hand, and you can see we will really help you with that. So I'm done with my portion, and uh, Paul's now gonna jump in. He's gonna show you how our platform is all kind of pieced together, and more importantly, where are we pulling all this data from? Well, Tom, that was a fabulous demo. <clears throat> um, I think I enjoyed that probably as much as our audience, so uh, I appreciate you doing that. Um, so real quick, just to finish off this webinar, I'm, I'm mindful of the time. We've got just a few, you know, 10 minutes. Um, you know, where, where do we get all this data that makes everything happen that you saw Tom do? You know, it's basically we take, we have over 60 million vendor SDSs in our database. Many of these we've extracted the VGD data, which is about 70 data points. Uh, the onset of GHS allowed us to have a homogeneous data set that we could do this. So when we, you know, when they introduced GHS and we started getting that extra data, we also have over 350,000 ChemWatch reauthored gold SDSs, and we can pull that data. And that is unique to the industry. Nobody has anything else like that. And the vendor data and the gold ChemWatch data complement each other because sometimes the vendor doesn't give you information that perhaps would be helpful for worker safety. We provide that. So many of these uh, ChemWatch SDSs have been authored by another customer. So if you are a member of our system, you have our system. Another user wants the gold data and we create it for them. You're the benefactor at no charge, you get that data. So all of our SDSs are <clears throat> reviewed by our um, chemical team. And we do have active data on the gold SDSs. All 16 sections of a gold SDS can be converted to 93 countries and 47 languages. And they all have real time links to our regulatory database. So a lot of the things that Tom was doing with the tags could also be on a regulatory database. And we had a customer that was working with some Annex 14 stuff in the UK. And he said literally in 20 minutes, he had all this information that would not have been possible with his previous system. So the regulatory database is kind of our secret sauce. We have a international regulatory database that's kept current by a team at ChemWatch. And it has over 7,000 regulatory databases, over 3 million substances and 8,000 families. So all this together, <clears throat> you know, makes the system what it is. And we also have 250,000 classified substances in our GHS classification database. So when you think ChemWatch, think excellent chemical data. And our team, you know, we have really good teams. You know, some of our, some of the people in our space kind of see this as a PDF management 
where we actually understand chemicals. Our team is you know, 80 plus chemical experts that are chemists, toxologists, hygienists, regulatory people, in addition to the IT staff, because we are a software company, you know, our product is a software as a service. It is hosted on Amazon service, servers. So, you know, we are an IT company, <clears throat> but in addition to the IT, we have the chemical experts on staff. We also author about three to 5,000 SDSs every month. So the company was founded 31 years ago, authoring SDSs by our uh, current CEO and company founder, you know, same, same person still at the helm for 31 years. And the system you're seeing is his dream of you know, how it should be created, what the architecture should be of a system. So like I mentioned on our platform, it's software as a service, uh, everything's .NET. And we do offer a web service API. So if you have an existing system and we've done this a lot for people, they just need better data. We become a data pipe into the system you have already. So we're just giving you better data. Like I said, we have 47 countries. So keeping everything current, you know, people always ask this, you know, what, you know, what the biggest nuisance we have is just keeping all the books current. You know, how do we keep the SDSs current? So we do that for you. And this is kind of the process is basically, you know, we create your database. Then as we acquire SDSs, whether you send them to us, say, you know, I, I don't see this from your database. Our web crawlers may find it other customers may find it. So however we get that SDS, then we basically do an extraction. Somebody will review it in our office, one of our chemical scientists. When it's approved, it goes into the database. And once it's in the database, and you kind of saw how Tom was able to create all this wonderful reporting, we also can do labels. So secondary labeling is kind of a, uh, an easy thing, but <clears throat> it's important. And because we have that data already in our database, we can output that into, into labels. And like Tom showed you, you know, we have all kinds of reports we can do, you know, your ERP system, perhaps we could do that, or we could, you know, show you on your reports, your information. And we update these SDSs in all your locations. So you'll get notification and then we do that for you. And all this is monitored by our chem watcher, which is kind of our name for the, <clears throat> the system that kind of keeps all this in track. So when I send you the, the PowerPoint, you'll actually be able to look in detail at these uh, SDSs, the 67 to 70 data points we extract per vendor SDS. We do use idle time on Amazon servers to actually cruise the web looking for SDSs. So we're always on the hunt for SDSs because we don't want you to do it. You know, we want to offload this task from your plate. We want to do this for you. When we find a new SDS, you'll be given the opportunity to have a side-by-side -side report and you can actually look at the two together and then see what the differences are. You know, what did the vendor change in this one versus the last one? Just making your job a little easier. We have a regulatory update report that will let you know about regulatory changes. We do have a new SAP interface. We have a SAP relationship that we're really proud of. And if you're interested in that, let us know. So we do offer our entire solution on a mobile platform. So we have uh, <clears throat> Android or iOS. So this is kind of just some screenshots and uh, maybe another webinar, Tom, we should actually show the detail on our, uh, our phone app. But at the end of the day, <clears throat> from the phone app, you can search for chemicals, you can find chemicals. And this uh, leftmost screen is your folders. You simply click on the folder. That's what's in the folder. You click on that and boom, you're presented with the SDS or a mini SDS, you can also run a uh, risk assessment report. So you can easily and quickly, you know, when a worker is on the, in the field, you could kind of enter everything in while you're standing there with your phone and create that uh, Cobra, you know, risk assessment. You can also search things just by keying in what you know and it will help you find it. And it also has the safety information. So maybe you want the one page mini SDS. And then if you need to share that, the app quickly provides for you and the usual methods on a smartphone to, you know, send as a text message, send as an email. So you can take that SDS and quickly send it to the person that needs it. You know, it may be a firefighting report, whatever. You know, so you're able to do that with the mobile solution. And one, one little piece of our technology that I really like, it's kind of Daha simple, but it's our offline archive. <clears throat> and I'm just going to show you that really quickly. So you, when you run the offline archive, it's literally five mouse clicks, and then you'll get this export. And one of the files is index.html. You simply double click on that, and then you're presented with 
a web page. And this is all the chemicals that Tom may have been showing in one of his folders. And from the document name, you can simply type in, you know, acetone and it'll automatically filter. And if you click on acetone, it presents that to you. So in this example, I've told it I just want mini SDSs and that's what it's providing. So this may be really handy. I mean, it could be vendor SDSs or goals, you know, up to you. But this could be really handy maybe in a chemical storage right outside where you might could just put a tablet PC or an old laptop. And then somebody could just go to it and simply easily click, you know, on this tool, you know, as opposed to understanding our system. You know, this is pretty Daha simple. Now this data is static data. You actually would export this report. But you know, it's very easy to do. You just do a few mouse clicks, you know, you wait, and then you get this information, you know, four, three folders and a file. And you simply just put that on that device. And I've actually loaded it on my smartphone. So it does work on a smartphone, as you can see. So our offline archive tool is something that we really don't talk about it much, but in thinking about chemical storage, you know, you want people to have access and maybe there's a place where you don't have internet access, or maybe there's not a cable right there, the Wi-Fi, who knows? Or maybe you just want them something simple. You know, our offline archive solves that problem as well. So the ChemWatch family is kind of um, basically a series of bundles. Most of our users will purchase our Gold FFX product. And our Gold FFX has basically what 80% of our customers would need. But we do offer some ability to have a sub or just a piece of the tool, or we can create the tool that you like. So if you want to just do authoring, we do that. You want to just buy a regulatory database, we can provide that. You just need labels. You just want to use our mobile app. Anything can be created with the ChemWatch system because it's very modular. So that being said, I think we finished with two minutes to go, Tom. So I don't know if we're gonna have time for question and answers. Do you want to Take oh, a stab yeah. at it, Tom. Yeah, we got a couple. Yeah, I saw one. Uh, I know we've answered a number online, which uh, we uh, first of all, we're, we'll send answers to everybody. But one of them just came up. Uh, how do we determine the PPE for gloves? So allow me to um, take over the screen real quick from Paul. And as you can see, folks, this is my screen. What I am looking at here, this is the ChemWatch Gold SDS for I think it was uh, WD-40. So it's reloading after I hit the wrong button. <laughs> Operator error. And as I showed earlier, you have the eight sections, or sorry, 16 sections. But if you go to exposure, excuse me, here's where we're going to talk to you about your glove type. And right there, we're using the Forsberg Clothing Performance Index to come up with these ratings. Okay. Very good. Okay. Um, other questions? Let me, Paul, why don't you grab it back for me? I was so going to say, I'll take it back real quick. And, uh, and I'll bring up a couple yeah. questions here. I just don't want to show the users' names. Um, we like to keep everything uh, private in that respect. So we have answered some. It, um, one of the things is, can placards be printed through ChemWatch? And the answer is yes. We have a tool. Paul touched on it. It's called DGen. It's our labeling tool. And you can use that to print out... Um, print out the placards as well. Um, how do you extract GHS info from SDSs and how do you account for differences in GHS between suppliers? Let me answer that real quick on the differences. We only report, for instance, on our reporting and when I showed you that vendor mini SDS, it only captures the data that's on the document. If they put in their uh, GHS rating five, that's what we're gonna report. We don't make it up, but we have the gold SDS that Paul and I showed you. That's where we are doing our independent analysis of the substance. A lot of times customers, when faced with such variants, will go with our gold rating. And then we have a number of other um, questions. And again, I think there's uh, seven or eight of them. And we'll send out answers um, here in the next few days. So I want to thank you for your time. We really appreciate it. Look forward to your future attendance. And uh, you have any questions, um, send them in to either Paul or I. Paul, do you want to take it from here and sign off? I was going to say, let's wind this thing up. Um, our next webinar will be more about authoring SDSs, classification of mixtures, and labels, and how easily we do this. And uh, as a special treat, we have a partnership that we're about to announce with Avery. Uh, everybody uses Avery labels. Um, it's I can't talk about it too much. I don't want to steal my own thunder from next week, next month. But our next webinar, it, we're, it's going to be really fun. 
so I, I encourage you to when you get the invitation just click on it and you know join us a little over a month from now and see um i mean everybody needs labels you know it's just one of those things and uh i think you're really going to like what we have for you that being said uh, i guess we're going to go ahead and wind it up tom right Final thank thoughts? you again, folks nope thanks again folks and you have a great day and um, look forward to your future attendance yep thank you everybody hope you have a good day